So now we are moving to a completely different uh, topic, which is uh, Vilfredo. And Vilfredo is a system for uh, reaching an agreement in a group of people. And, um, and so is it okay for, um, is it okay if I speak about Vilfredo? Yes. Is it okay if I speak about Vilfredo? Uh, is it okay if I speak about Vilfredo? Uh, I am asking, uh, I should actually ask everybody, but, uh, if it's okay, what am I doing right now? I'm not asking for your agreement, uh, I'm asking for your consent uh, to speak about Wilfredo. There is a difference between agreement and consent, and it's something that we often forget, uh, but is extremely important uh, because you actually have a number of mathematical properties that comes out of this, uh, of this difference. So the first thing that I want to speak about is the difference and the importance of the concept of consent in voting. Now, usually we look at the three types of voting. There is a kind of system where you want everybody to agree on something and you want to show consensus. Okay, and then you agree, you, there are situations where you recognize that you're not going to be able to get everybody to agree on something. And then you, and that's where the voting theory enters. You know, okay, we have to count how many are in favor, how many are against, and, uh, you know, 300 years of voting theory that you all know uh, better than me. But then there is this other idea, which is the, idea of consent, and the, the one that are using consent right now, the systems that are using consent that I know of are three. One is a sociocracy, the other one is a holacracy, and the third one is Vilfredo. And they are all very, very interesting uh, systems. They are ways to, to manage organizations. So if, if you have an issue, people will generally fall into five different categories. So they either can agree or disagree with that issue, or they can be neutral. And, when they, and in the inside that they agree or disagree, we can divide another time between people who agree something and are actually willing to do something about it, or disagree with something and are willing to try to do as much as possible for it not to happen. And uh, here I called it veto. You might actually say that veto is a more extreme uh, element, but more or less you understood. Whereas uh, disagree and disagree is more an intellectual thing. It's something like, yeah, I agree that that should happen, but I don't want to really get involved. And uh, please do it without me. And um, in a normal uh, consensus system where people... Uh, you know, people vote and we want uh, everybody to, we are trying to find uh, a situation that everybody agrees with. Uh, those two are considered to be agree, those two are considered to be disagree, and neutral is a person who really don't, uh, don't take uh, part. But uh, if we are actually looking for a consent system, the neutral is often a consent. So if you're neutral about it, uh, yes, you consent for that to happen. And this makes the huge division, a, a, a huge difference. Because now, unless you have a real reason why something should not happen, you consent to that. For example, in sociocracy, they make their, their decision in a circles. And a circle have usually between 5 and 12 people. There is a moderator and someone comes out with a proposal. And then there are a few, uh, you go around the circle a few times and uh, ask everybody what do they think about uh, that proposal if they, uh, if they are going to consent or not uh, to that proposal. <coughs> they are allowed not to consent to that uh, only if they have a rational reason why they are not going to consent to that. And so they have to explain that rational reason uh, and uh, through that rational reason, the proposal gets amended uh, and, uh, and they try to find uh, a, better, a better situation. The result of this is basically that all the neutral people 
are in the wagon of people who consent. And as a result of this, the system, a consent system scales up better than a consensus system. We all know that after that you actually have a you know, majoritarian system where people just vote and that scales all the way. But that has the problem of uh, um, dictatorship of the majority. You know, here you don't have dictatorship of the majority because uh, if you are in the minority and you don't like it, you get the possibility to stop every proposal, but you have to have a rational reason for that. And there have to be a level of trust within the community so that, uh, you know, the moderator will have to judge if the rational reason is, uh, is reasonable and, the, and you're just not, you know, being vicious for something. And so, so it's... Uh, it's kind of uh, an advanced system uh, among people that kind of share some of the values. You probably would not be able to get something like that uh, to, to work in the parliament uh, or among people that hate each other. But when uh, people tend, are in the same organization, it tends to work. And um, so the fact is that uh, we use uh, those constant systems uh, much more than we are aware of. They pop up in life much more than we are aware of. In fact, they tend to be there even when we would like them not to be there. Now imagine that you have five person, Angela, Betty, Claude, Diderot and Eve, and imagine that this is how they like or not like some issues. So you have five issues and Diderot and Eve have, uh, have issues with the first three issues. They basically would put a veto on them, they think. Whereas uh, each of those have a support like one of those and disagree with the other one. You could think of those three issues as, uh, you know, uh, buy a house for Angela, buy a house for Betty, buy a house for Claude. And... Uh, you know, and they think, no, 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 this is completely wrong. So you, you could think about uh, things that are really not. Whereas uh, issue four and issue five, you know, they have a level of approval, they have a level of support and uh, some disagreement. So if you, are, uh, if you are summing up the vote, you, you actually get that the last two issues are... Uh, uh, are voted, are accepted, and the first three are rejected. You know, normal, normal basic, uh, basic vote. But now let us suppose that the evening before the vote, Angela, Betty, and Claude decided to go and have a pizza together. And they went out, they had a good time, they chatted, and then they realized that they were the majority. And that they could actually do whatever they pleased because of being the majority. And so they now tied together between them and decided that they would actually support each other on everything that they did not veto. Okay, if I veto some, if I'm part of a, an organization like this, if I veto something, I'm not going to vote for that. You are not going to, to convince me to vote for something that is really against my values. But, uh, but uh, apart of the veto for the disagreement, uh, well, yeah, I don't like this, but, you know, it's going to help a friend, and I scratch your back, you scratch my back. So it's this kind of uh, situation. So now, in a situation like this, uh, they all consented to the first three issues. And uh, the rejection of the other two in a normal uh, in a normal voting does not really count anything and the first three issues are approved. Whereas the other two, they don't consent on this because, well, yes, she had an approval, Claude has an approval, but, you know, that was not really a support. It was just a general. So the result of this was that they get rejected, those two. And what Diderot and Eve uh, wanted counts nothing. So you have a voting system, and, but that voting system is basically completely uh, useless because at the end, those three people, just by deciding to have a consent system among them, eliminated the, the, rest of, uh, the importance of the rest of the votes. 
Where does this happen all the time? It happens in parliaments. You know, well, here you have the two things compared. And, uh, and it happens in parliament. You could have, you can have, this is a, a very common situation in a party where, you know, you might have a, a, an issue where you have a small amount of people that support something or that agree and a big amount of people that, are, that don't like it. But if the government is, is this side, they, they will actually impose it. In fact, you can actually reach the point where 49% of the people have a veto on something and 49% of the remaining people, you know, has a disagree with that. And as long as the 2% are actually the party leaders, they kind of say, okay, this is going to pass. And they, they, they force the issue through the whole parliament and it goes through. In Italy, that happens all the time. And this is at the base of why people are angry with, uh, with politics. This is important because the whole idea of parliament is uh, we are getting those people to discuss and to vote what, what should be the laws according to the majority of the parliament. But we are actually seeing that, uh, that a huge part of, the, of that is not, uh, is not going to be part of the discussion. First takeaway messages, then we are going to continue after. But one is that consent scales better. We said it uh, before. I mean, so much it scales better that you can actually apply it among the, among the party in power in a parliament, so which, which has uh, hundreds of people. So how do you solve this problem is one possible solution is to use consent more often. You know, trying, instead of taking a, a situation where you vote on majority, but then with the risk that, uh, you know, people that are the majority go on the side, decide to become basically one unit, and then you could just decide that you vote on consent from the beginning, or you, you need to avoid people having the possibility to join together and decide that I scratch your back and you scratch my back. And uh, this, uh, on normal parliament, you're not going to be able to do it. But uh, you can actually do it online. For example, yesterday, Pascal presented us uh, a system where people were voting, and they were voting in isolation. They would not see how other people were voted, and then the moderator would actually put together the various votes. That's one, of, uh, that's one, uh, one example. So is the idea of uh, you're online, you might actually not even know who is voting over there, who are the other person voting. And this is actually something that uh, I think is really important. Where do you think that uh, all those uh, e-democracy theory and e-democracy work uh, will have the most applications in the next uh, five years or ten years? Will it be in the parliament? Or will it be in, uh, in companies? Well, I think that uh, the real place uh, where those things will, will have uh, a tremendous application will be in the governance of the blockchain. So in any case, Vifredo is uh, another of the tools that uses uh, consent.